What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mug. Look who I got. It's Lewis on his pimp ride. Oh, we're gonna paint him up. That's right. So, uh, the first thing I want to say about this build is that you'll notice there are, he's only got three zombie power, powering his corpse cart and not four. The reason is because when I opened the sprue to get out of the box, I just left the sprue as it was in the corner um, with all my other hobby stuff and at some point the zombie piece got knocked off. I have no idea where it went when I was cleaning my room. I was looking everywhere for it. I also uh, knocked off the second lamp lantern. It goes on the back over here. If I was using the bale fire, then I still got two of those fire things, flames, but I have only f was able to recover one lantern. Everything else is standard. I kind of regret gluing it all together now. Um, I was just kind of making sure that I had all the pieces, but now looking at it, I kind of regret it because um, I, I like to paint things in sub-assemblies now, which means that I don't have to worry about reaching funny angles and turning the, the model in all different angles in order to get what I want. But um, this is going to be a standard kind of GW paint scheme. And um, I'm just going to show you how I do it. Okay, so the first color we're going to use is Cal Thin Brown. So I'm going to make my wet palette. I'm using a clamshell from one of the fine casts or single models I can remember. I'm going to pour some water at the bottom so that it kind of covers just about the entire surface area. And then I'm gonna take a napkin and rip an appropriate length of it and place it down on the inside. Actually, I think this is for, using this much water is for if you have parchment paper, which I can't seem to find anywhere. So I'm gonna pour some of it out. We don't want the water to be too much, that should be about right. So about, about this much water. Doesn't quite cover the whole thing. And then we're gonna put our napkin inside. You shouldn't be able to see any puddles or anything on the top. So this is, probably could use a little bit more napkin because I can totally see the things starting to puddle. Um, this is my ghetto wet palette. What is a wet palette for? The wet palette is going to keep your, keep the paint that you put on it from drying out so that you can, I just poured out some water, so that you can continue painting with it like five, five, up to five minutes or so, I would say, after, after the, um, after you take it out of the pot. So. Sometimes when people say painting straight out of the pot, they uh, they don't like it because it comes right out of the pot. It's still thick, it's still heavy. So having a wet palette kind of breaks down a little bit. Of course, you don't want it to be too wet. It's actually more accurate to call it a moist palette. What I'm doing now is I'm just pouring out all the excess water so that all of the liquid stays at the top. All right, so that's how you do a wet palette. So we're gonna take our Calvin Brown and we're gonna Take a big glob of it and put it on our wet palette. So this is kind of what it looks like when you put the paint on it. You could put a lot and it'll stay, hopefully it'll stay in one area unless it's too wet. If it's too wet then it'll spread into other areas and bleed to other colors. You don't really want that. So you want your paint to stay kind of central to one location. Just like that pretty much. Still kind of wet, but um, that's alright. So I'm going to start by painting all of the wood areas. Yeah, this would be much easier to do. If I could glue this together again, I would certainly take my time and I would glue, uh, I would not glue the wheels on first. Um, I'm going to also start getting to work on the, the main body. The great thing about the wet palette too is because it's so heavily thinned down, or not heavily thinned down, but because it's mixed with the water, the water will help the paint cover 
when you're when you're painting. If you just put paint on a plastic palette, then um, it would dry out a lot faster. Especially if you live in a hot or humid area. Is it hot or humid or is it like cold and air conditioned? I can't remember off the top of my head. I know when I have my air conditioner going that the paint seems to dry out a lot faster than otherwise would. So Calvin Brown, a lot of people decide to use instead Kemri Brown for the wood. Uh, Kemri Brown is a lighter brown and it's either one will work. For me I chose Calvin because I want most of my corpses on the cart to be of a lighter Talern flesh slash Deneb stone color. So for me painting Calvin Brown for the wood and then washing it is gonna give us a, a really darker, darker feel, which I think is more appropriate to the Gothic setting. Dark and um, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for, Igor? Hopeless. Yes, thank you. What the hell is that? That's my new assistant, Igor. You never told me you had a new assistant. Well, Lewis, you are out looking for chicks in your unpainted corpse cart if you just wait around and hung out and watch my tutorials more often, you would see that I have a cameraman assistant now and his name is Igor. Well, don't that just be dull? Do you want me to paint your corpse cart or don't you? I want you to paint my corpse cart! Alright. Just hang out over there while I get this done. Can I play your video games? No. But I want to cost Roda some dragons. Do you even know what you're saying? No. I want to tell that dragon to get off my lawn. So just like all things, you want to turn turn your model at a bunch of different angles so that you can uh, so you can get into all the different angles so that there's no unpainted primered areas, which you're going to need to be careful of with the wheels since there's so many different angles you could turn it. I love how this one wheel is built to look like. This one uh, piece of wood is snapped. That's pretty cool. You don't really need to be too careful because in a second we're gonna get, when we're painting the big pile of bodies on the middle, we're gonna have to worry about that. That's another reason why I should have broken this up into sub-assemblies. Note to self, if you make another one of these, some tactics I've read saying that two corpse cards are better than one. So if I ever do this again, I'm going to need to definitely do them in sub-assemblies. So Lewis, yeah we're boss! What do you think of uh, Izzy? Isabella von Karstein. She's one hot mama. Yeah, she is. Don't let Vlad hear you saying that. Oh, I'm not scared of that guy. <laughs> oh, Lewis. I'm also going to be painting the bell. Um, I guess I can't really explain how I would do a lodestone, right? Or not, uh, not a bell fire since I'm doing the bell. Um, I would do it in the green if I had to paint a bell fire, but 
I'm painting a lodestone. So what I'm gonna color it, or the color that I'm gonna paint the lodestone, is going to be first cow thin brown because we're gonna base that uh, base our dark bronze on it. So you can just get your cow thin brown all over the bell. And as you can see, when the paint starts to thin out like this, it means that the water to paint ratio in your palette is starting to get a little unbalanced. So you gotta go back and put some more paint on the palette. You want to make sure you get all of these corpse cart spines, the wooden spines, on on each side. Ooh, let's get a little bit more light. That means checking them out from the inner angle and the outer angle, so that you don't miss any any surface areas. Oh, I so would paint this in sub-assemblies if I had a chance. Hindsight is 2020. Unless you've got the gaze of Nagash. Lewis, are you even saying that correctly? Yes. I don't think that's how you pronounce his name. Hey, uh, my, my camera shut off. Um, I didn't see how far I was running. Igor, you're supposed to warn me when I get close to cut off time. Sorry, Master. I was playing Capcom versus Marvel with Lewis. Well, stop it, get behind the camera. Next we're gonna paint bodies. And the bodies we're gonna paint debit, de debit. This one. So, with, with any paints really, you could use a wet palette and it'll help to break down how thick it is, but especially, especially with foundation paints. And we're going to be pretty liberal with this. Um, we're just going to get in there and paint it all denim stone and then let the wash sort it out. Ooh, I saw some great um, on articles or pictures in the GW articles, what's new today. Painting up, how to paint up all these different guys in here. In this giant mess. And I'm definitely going to use some of them. There's this one in the article, the guy said that he painted it up. The guy in the center to look like he was burned at the stake. So he looks really charred and burnt up. Whereas the guys around him look like they were in various states of decay. You've got fresh bodies, you've got guys that are almost down to, to bone. So really, really awesome. It's funny because when you look at the look at the cover of the Vampire Counts book and it looks like it's meant for, you know, nine-year-olds, the guy on the cover looks so cartoony. And he's like, his mouth is all open wide, and he's like, Brr, I'm a vampire. But then you look inside, and it's like, oh my god. This artwork. It's going to give me nightmares. So you got a lot of stuff mixed in this body pile. You've got, obviously, corpses. You've got rats hanging out inside of corpses. You've got cloth, hair. Just a whole bunch of nastiness. And we're going to be getting all of it. It's pretty interchangeable. You can either paint the 
the body pile inside first or the or the wood frame first. Because it's all glued together, the easiest way for me to get all this done is to do everything in stages together, like not to get to the very end of one stage before moving on to the next piece. Because then if we make mistakes, which we're pretty much guaranteed to do in this way, we can we can fix it without too much too much trouble. such a great kit. I, I really wanted to do an unboxing. I'm really bummed I can't find the, the, the missing components for this model. The zombies at the front I'm not too worried with right now because they are separate and individual from this pile of bodies, so I'm going to do those a little separately and differently later. Zombie party! Is that what they're calling it these days, master? I know that some of these are not limbs, but pant legs or even weapons, like pitch, pitchforks, heads, but I am just going to continue painting these guys no matter what. It's got a very uh, Constantine, what dreams may come. What are those movies where the dead bodies are all piled up together? Cinematic masterpiece. Lewis is a little, a little creepy, so we'll give him the denim stone treatment as well. See, so I'm turning him at different angles to paint his fingers. I'm also going to paint the zombie torso on the bait stick and at this point we can start painting some of our zombies as well on the front. Impossible!
I am not keeping this center at all, I'm sorry. Okay, the good thing about denim stone is that you can use it for this flesh and use washes to really make them pop later. The sickly diseased limbs. Or you can use them as bone. And I like that. because it'll still contrast with the blacks and the reds and the blues and everything, but at the same time, it makes them... What am I talking about? Did I just doze off while I was painting? Can't do that. I'm talking gibberish while I'm painting because I doze off. Oh no, I'm gonna take away my license. They're gonna take away my license, Igor! I don't know what you're talking about, master. Everything's heisy. Well, snap out of it, Igor. Snap out of it. We need our wits about us. We're gonna paint Lewis's pimp ride. If it's the last thing you do. Me! I'm just the hired help. Ugh. Look at the splints and the crutches they've got on these guys walking at the front. Poor necromancer. Lewis, we need to get you... We need to get you some new kicks. Alright. There. Seems to me like the biggest hassle of painting this thing is just getting all the details separately. Hmm. I had the strangest dream that I started painting this. And what do you know? That was so weird. <laughs> I need to get more sleep. So I did get a full night's sleep, so now I'm ready to continue with the next step. The next step in our, the next phase in our plan is that we are going to paint the, um, we're gonna paint Lewis up. We're gonna give him chaos black hair. And his lower robes are going to be chaos black. What I mean by lower robes is the sleeves, the the main body of the robes, everything but his his uh, this upper part of his robe has like a, a layer that goes over the lower layer, and we're going to paint that a different color. So we're going to leave that for now, though. We're going to leave it our primer color gray. This is where building in sub-assemblies would have made it so much easier. Right now I'm just kind of haphazardly jabbing in there, but jabbing my paintbrush in there, but it's, it's okay. You live and you learn. I know next time what to do, so I'm not you know, I'm not that mad. You learn, you learn and you move on. That's the good thing about the new uh, iron, is it the iron blaster? Yeah, the iron blaster. I, I built it up and the instructions are very, very, very clear that you should paint certain sections separately before attaching them together. And I read that and I was like, that's fantastic. I wish all kits said that. Or if they do, I haven't seen it. So I'm dropping the paint onto my, my wet palette, getting it nice and nice and thin down so that it comes on in a nice smooth layer and then I'm just dragging it across his cloak or his robe I mean his hoodie wow um, I gotta get more sleep something I was like dozing off while I was filming that's never happened to me before it's okay to poke through here because we're going to be painting this metal. It doesn't have to be the wood color of Calton Brown. And like I said, we're painting, but we're not going to paint the hood or this area right over his, his shoulders. We're not going to paint that. Uh, 
looks good. So now we're gonna paint the hood. Oh, we're also gonna paint his uh, the inside of the robes and his hair if we can get it his long, beautiful locks of hair. So luxurious. In all honest, honesty though, I like how GW molded his robes and his hair to be flying as if swept by the unholy breeze from behind him. His hair isn't whipped back, his hood's not whipped back, it's actually whipped forward, which I think is really interesting. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the upper part of his robes with dark flesh. In this step, the dark flesh is going to be the color of the robe, the color of his hood. And um, there we go. It's a great color. It's what I use for Lewis on foot model seems to like it. I love it! I'll be quiet. So, we're gonna paint now. So this is slightly different from the GW website, but I'm actually going by their newer Necromancer model rather than, you know, what's on the GW website for the corpse cart. I'm gonna have to turn it at some funky angles to get my brush up under here. So excuse the blurriness for a second. This really would be so much better if I had just built it in self assembly, that's okay. Alright. Last thing we're gonna do, which I think we have time for, is we're going to start painting the metallics in bolt gun metal. So the rim of the wheel, the um, the blades, the brackets, the bell, well not the bell yet, but the lamp, anything that looks like it's built in metal, we're going to give it this bolt gun metal paint. I can't believe I just knocked out like that, I can't get over it. I'm filming this tutorial, next thing I know, I'm like dozing off and then I come back hours later after a full night's sleep and I can't remember painting any of what I just did. I remember basically going, let's paint on the wood in Calton Brown and everything after that is complete blur. It's like the hangover, but Warhammer. Okay, so I'm painting these. I'm gonna go from the back to the front. So I'm painting this little gate section. Holding Lewis in place. I 
also if you put on these optional decorations, you've got axes and vials of stuff and, and ropes and whatnot. So we're going to paint all those in eventually. way slowly down the sides. I'm looking at all the blades hanging from this little thing here. So I'm going to paint all the blades in bolt gun metal. I'm going to leave the wood in Calvin Brown. Oh, we're just looking for side on. We haven't looked underneath yet. We haven't peeked under the carriage. I just want to hit the different angles of these weapons from the side. Best thing to do with any model, but especially with these large models, is you want to plot out ahead. So if I had made subsections, I would have made, I would have planted each one probably in a different order. This is just too frenetic to paint. I gotta get this, now you gotta get this. Oh, but you do this, so now you gotta do this. You can't do this anymore because you painted this. What am I talking about? I don't know. finish this wheel, then we're going to take a little break. I'm going to eat some hamburger happy meals while you guys do whatever you want, and then I will see you in the next section of the video when all the metallics will be complete. After doing these wheels, then I'm going to go to the front and paint all the weapons and the metallic bits on these guys. I'm also going to paint silver the staff up here. So I'm going to continue doing that. Probably won't get another video out until Saturday at the earliest, Sunday at the latest. But hope you continue to watch and enjoy Lewis's Pimp Ride! Burp, 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 burp. Burp, 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 burp.